Happy Resurrection Day. Today is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. No matter what the situation is, always look to Jesus Christ and you will be revived. Welcome to Resurrection Sunday. Today is going to be a powerful day. You are going to enjoy what we have in store for you. Get ready. Today is one of the most powerful days on the calendar and we are going to be breaking it down. Not just looking at your simple um, yeah, he was resurrected type of thing, but we are going to go deep into it, looking at the five things that Jesus did when he was resurrected from the cross. As you know, my name is Michael Faber. I'm here with a live audience. The family is here. We are about to get into the Word, get your Bible, get the popcorn, make yourself comfortable. Get ready to receive from the Heavenly Bakery. Glory be to God, to welcome to the Father's house. Today is an amazing day. It's an amazing day for all us believers. It's an amazing day for even unbelievers. It's an amazing day for anybody that has heard the story of the man called Jesus Christ. And by the grace of God, I am here today to try and break this down for you, to try and make it understandable. Um, we are here today looking at some of the most important things that Jesus done. of God to come down and have to take our place. We're going to take our first reading. Before we do that, we are going to commit this service into the hands of the Holy Spirit, the one that wrote this book from, from beginning to end. The Bible says, and, 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 and the saints were moved of the Spirit to write. This is one of this 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 book was written over 600 different years over 61 different chapters by different people and they all spoke of the same savior what 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 a blessing what what a revelation and this is what I believe that we are stepping into. We are stepping into a season of revelation whereby knowing Jesus Christ or knowing of him is not going to be enough. But you have to have his word inside of you. You have to have the, the, the words that he spoke inside of you. You have to understand and be able to walk with him before I go into that word, I, I just want to bring this out, and the Holy Spirit is leading me to say this. In the book of John, it said, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word is God. The word is God. The word is God. You see, throughout this teaching today, we are going to understand the importance of your spiritual identity because you are not what you see <laughs> on TV you are not what you see in the mirror you are not you are you are made up of so much more and I'm going to I'm going to bring this understanding to you I'm going to bring this to you and help you understand it you're not what you see in the mirror so it's not how you look or Oh yes, I'm looking good today, I feel good today. No, the Holy Spirit is inside of you. He said, I will make my dwelling place in you. I will dwell in you. So that now, instead of the Holy Spirit coming and going, He dwells in you. 
Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Lord Jesus, we just want to thank you for, for giving us this opportunity to arise and shine. We thank you for giving us this opportunity to receive your knowledge. We thank you for giving us this opportunity to feed from the heavenly bakery. Father God, allow your revelation to manifest in our hearts. You said you will write your commandments on our hearts. Let our heart be the altar of the new covenant. Let it be so in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You see, somebody say plan. This was a plan that God had shown his it, it, was, a, it, was, it was a plan that God had shown um, many of his um, it was a plan that God had shown many of his his, 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 his prophets from a long time ago. He'd shown them this plan that, you know, let's, let's, let's go into the book of Isaiah, one of the most powerful prophetic books. Um, we're going to take it from uh, 53, Isaiah 53. And you'll see that, I mean, this book, Isaiah, is one of the oldest books in the Bible. It was written years before Jesus Christ was born, but yet it's still talking about the same individual. It's still talking about the same individual. Listen to this. We're taking it from verse 5. 54 verse 5. And it says, and I read. I'm on 53. Okay, 54 verse 5. Sorry, 53 verse 5. My mistake. 53 verse 5. Okay. We're going to take it from verse 5. 53 verse 5. Listen to this. But he was... I'll take it from verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our wickedness, our sin and our injustice. The punishment required for our well-being fell on him. So this is what happened when Jesus Christ went to the cross. He was wounded because of our sin. He was beaten because of our wickedness. Are you with me? Because throughout the whole Bible you see, you see you see, you see, you see God trying to, I call it a love affair. God has a love affair with his children. He was trying, trying, to, trying to, look, obey me and I will bless you. Obey me and I will bless you. Obey me and I will bless you. And yet someone else would come along with a new, new um, God that they could see. Remember, not everything you see is real. Amen? Amen. Have you ever walked past a big massive shadow and then you look and it's a small baby? It's just the way the light is hitting it. Amen? Amen. But because Jerusalem, this God, he, he made, he made, he made, he made a, 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 a rule and he stuck to it. He said, Human beings will take over the earth and I will, the heavens are my footstool. Now, with other gods, people like to say, okay, we can see Baal, we can see so and so, so we can go and meet him in the temple and he is there. But God said that these gods do not answer your prayers. They cannot talk, they cannot hear. They are made of wood. Glory be to God. What are, our, what are our idols today? What is an idol? Something that you worship. Something that you cherish. 
something that you hold close, something that is important to you, is an idol. Now, God was tired of being separated from us through these idols. So he decided that, okay, these guys are going to continue being disobedient. I have set a law, the law of Moses. Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt honor thy mother and father, and so and so. But they were not meeting up to this law. So he said to himself, who can go for us? And you read in the earlier chapters of Isaiah, Jesus said, here I am, send me. Glory be to God. Oh, what a wonderful day. When our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, decided to arise and take our transgressions. Listen to this. He said, he was wounded. This is Isaiah talking in the past. He was wounded for our transgressions, our sins. Amen? Amen. He was crushed for our wickedness. Do you know that human beings are the most wicked things on earth? Amen? Amen. They can laugh in your face, but behind, plan for you. They can say, no, no, this is the way, this is the way, yet there's a brood of robbers waiting to, 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 to do evil. It's not the same in the animal kingdom. Amen? We humans, we are, we are the only one that we kill each other, not, not to eat. In the animal kingdom, they kill each other to, to, because they have to eat. We kill each other for greed. We destroy our brothers, we destroy our sisters for money and promotion. But yet the Bible says that promotion comes from the Lord. Everything good comes from God. The same way that Jesus Christ came from God. Jesus Christ was good. So he said, he was wounded for our transgressions, yeah? Verse 4. I'm going to read verse 4. But in fact, he was born for our griefs. And he carried our sorrows and pain. When Jesus was going to the cross, this is in Isaiah, this was 600 years before Jesus ever was born. God was already making a plan. I always say something. If there is a way into the problem, there is a way out. If you find yourself in the problem, the fact that you have entered that problem means that there is a way out and you must find that way and the only way to do so is to wait on God because God has a plan he wants you going in and he will surely see you come out oh I'm praying for somebody there he wants you go into a problem he wants you go into a situation he wants you go into knowing that he was going to bring you out Knowing that no matter what, when you go through the fire, I'm with you. He didn't say you will not go through the fire. He didn't say you will not go through the, to, the high waters. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. It says, he was wounded for our transgression. The reason why they beat him was because he was carrying my sin. I don't know about you. The reason why Jesus Christ went to the cross, he was carrying my sin. He was carrying, he was crushed for our sin. And the punishment required fell on him. And by his stripe, by his wounds, we are healed. If you can just understand that one verse, that, but the fact that somebody else stood in the gap for you. Amen? Amen? The fact that somebody else, two brothers, one got caught, the other one said it was him, the other one ran away. 
The one that didn't do it, he spent life imprisonment. He was sentenced. They gave him the, this was in the early 90s when, when, when punishment was still capital. They, they, they put him to death. The younger one came back and said, look, 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 don't, don't kill my brother, it was me. They said, it's too late. Judgment has been passed. Okay, okay, arrest me then, because I'm, cause he was feeling guilty. Are you with me? This is the same as Jesus Christ. When, when the enemy comes to condemn you, he doesn't have a leg to stand on. Your direction or speak, go and talk to my brother Jesus. Because he died for my sins. He died for my sins. He died for my sins. Again, I say he died for my sins. When you understand that Jesus Christ died for your sins, you start to walk on a level that doesn't, on a level that doesn't make sense. It said, be anxious for nothing, but in all things, give thanks. Paul said, when you are being tested, when you are being trialed, it will bring patience, and patience brings hope, and hope, revelation. So whatever happens to you as a child of God, know that God has a plan for you. Amen? Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Did we get that? Oh, yeah, perfect. That means that, first of all, God already had a plan in place. Before the problem started, God has already been speaking to his prophets. What did the prophet say about you? Are you holding on to that prophecy? Are you praying with it? Are you fighting with it? Are you believing it? We're going to go down the list because um, there are some things that Jesus Christ did. Five main things that Jesus Christ did after he's resurrected. Because I know that many, many people will be talking about, oh, and Sunday morning, Mary ran to the tomb, and the tomb was empty. But I asked the Holy Spirit, can you show me something deeper than this? That will help us understand what it was. What was his mission? Why did he come? Amen? Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Let's look at this. First Corinthians chapter one, verse fifteen. First Corinthians chapter one, verse fifteen. Um, we will endeavor to get this on the screen for you, but where is your Bible at? 1 Corinthians Now look at this 1 Corinthians 1 Chapter 15 It says Now brothers and sisters Let me remind you once again Of the good news Everyone say the good news Whenever you hear of somebody dying for you It's good news Whenever you hear that A whole God came down in human form. In the book of Hebrews, he said that he knows our afflictions. He knows he was tired. He was hungry. There were times when he was hungry and they went to get food for him. So when you, when you, when you go to God and say, I'm hungry, God doesn't understand. Because God has never been hungry. When you say, God, I'm tired of this, God says, what does tired mean? Because he's never been tired. He's not in time. He, he created time. He's outside of time. That's why he sent his only son. Go and experience what they experience. And come and tell me what it's like. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says that Jesus was, Jesus was hungry next to the well. And the woman came and gave him water. Amen? Amen. 
The Bible said that Jesus was tired in the in the Garden of Gethsemane. The disciples were sleeping, but yeah, he went back and prayed. Amen. Amen. So this was God in the flesh. His flesh was operating, but there was a spirit of God in him. I encourage you today that there is a spirit of God in you. Although your flesh, your carnal flesh, is asking questions, there is a spirit in you that is of God. May your candle not go out in Jesus' Amen. name. May your candle not go out in Jesus' Amen. name. Remember I said in Isaiah, by his stripes, and that word there is not stripes, it's stripes. His whole back was stripped of flesh. Because he was sick that night, lying in the tomb, lying in the prison, all bacteria entering his body. Imagine, you know, the first thing that you do when you cut your hand is you clean it, cover it, so it doesn't get infected. His body was infected, so you will not be infected. Amen. How dare sickness come to you when Jesus is in you? Say this with me, Christ in me, Christ is me. my hope of glory, Christ in me, my hope of glory. Whenever you lose sight of who you are, remember the one that is in you, the one that prayed. He said, they said, he paid a price for you. He paid a heavy price for you. He bought you. He paid the price of sin so that you can now come into the presence of God saying, Abba Father, as children of God, Abba Father. Amen? Amen. And yet the reason why they killed him was because he was claiming to be the Son of God. But look at it today. Me and you can walk freely and say that we are the children of God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah.